Today we continue building what will definitely be the biggest wargaming board on this channel and potentially in the history of Warhammer scenery. It's time to build the Imperial Palace on Terra. Yes, we are once again diving into crafting probably the most famous location in all of Warhammer, the Imperial Palace on Terra from the grimdark universe of Warhammer 30,000. This build is going to be an absolute monster and in the last two episodes we tackled some of the generic urban cityscape as well as some epic dungeons and interiors of mighty bastions and ramparts of the Imperial City, but today we are going truly stupidly massive as we get our first mental structure down on the tabletop with a giant modular and destructible cathedral style administratum complex. The palace is an absolutely monstrous structure, built on the bones of the old Himalayan mountains by the Emperor of Man with the circumference of the outer ring wall measured in the thousands of kilometers. There is no way I'm going to be able to build this location fully to scale. So instead, we're going to focus on some key regions to capture the environment and then stitch them together into an epic mega board, much like the amazing layout I saw recently at Warhammer World. But with the big move to New Zealand just around the corner, we're going to be building components in super modular pieces so they're not only easy to travel, but also super adaptable for use in the many Horus Heresy and 40k campaigns unfolding over the coming years. And as I'm sure many of you know, our massive Horus Heresy campaign, The Mark of Kelth, is currently underway here on the channel. And it is, it's just mental. It's absolutely mental. Over 50,000 points of models across nearly 30 videos, including nine massive battle reports. I promise you, you guys have never seen anything like it on YouTube. It is really, really intense. Please go and check it out. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I've got links down in the description and pinned in the top comment. But our fourth episode in the campaign is an absolute monster with all 50,000 points worth of models on the table at once. And it takes place on the surface of Kalth as the word bearers and ultramarines fight over a massive cathedral style administratum complex, the Trading and Commerce Guild Hall. So I knew that I needed a really sexy structure that would be the perfect centerpiece for the first part of the Imperial Palace board, the Petitioner City, as well as being able to double for the Landshear Port Guild Hall on Kalth. For the high level of detail I wanted, I knew it would either be plastic kits or 3D printed, but the structure needs to be large enough for my Warlord and Reaver Titans to be able to fight over it and use it for cover in 28mm scale, so the plastic kit angle was going to be way too expensive. So I began to start checking out some 3D files, and my mate Adam from Inferno Hobbies 3D Printing showed me the incredible suite of Gothic City files, the Zone 1 release from Warlayer. I reached out to Andy from Warlayer, who's an absolute champion of a bloke, and he was not only kind enough to send me all the files, but if you guys fall as in love with the files as I did, you can use the link below to pick them up and you'll send a bit of cash back to support me and the project here on Zorpazorp. Cheers for that Andy, you're an absolute champ and it's so awesome to have your support. So I started exploring the huge amount of files available and I got to dive into one of my favourite processes ever when making scenery and that is digital mock-ups. I always do a series of sketches when I'm planning a build but combining digital STLs in software to plan and mock up how structured might look before I've even started building is incredible fun and it really helps fuel the imagination. I was planning all sorts of crazy stuff that I never would have been able to envisage until I had it in my hands, but as the project got bigger and bigger, so too did the computer crashes. I wanted one massive structure with several towers soaring high into the sky well above the primary roof line, so I settled on a layout with four octagonal tower blocks, two part of the main structure at the northern end of the cathedral and two at the southern end on the other side of a roadway accessed by a large colonnade lined walkway. I would have a series of roof lines joining these towers end to end over the cathedral, but I'm going to have the centre blown open by a massive artillery shell to allow easy access for gameplay. The wall layer files are all individual blocks that I'll be gluing together or allowing to sit freestanding so the whole structure is not only going to be insanely modular but completely destructible with towers and walls able to be blown up mid-game for some seriously dynamic gameplay. 
I soon realized I was going to need an army of 3D printers to get all these pieces printed in time for the Mark of Kelth campaign, so I lit the beacons of Gondor once more and summoned my normal printy boys James and Davey, as well as an absolute monstrous effort from Adam and Felix from Inferno Hobbies 3D Printing. We literally had Adam and Felix's print farm running for months. Anytime they didn't have a client job on, they were churning out more and more and more Imperial City. And all these legends didn't charge me a cent for the printing time, just the cost of the filament. I am truly blessed with some awesome mates. James, Davey, Adam and Felix, I love you guys. If you guys need a 3D printing service, Adam and Felix at Inferno Hobbies have got you covered. Hell, why not grab the war layer files and then get Inferno to print them? Then we can all have an Imperial Palace. Or perhaps it's time for you to finally dive into the world of 3D printing. And there's no better FDM machine than the new Ender 5 S1 from Creality. We used a whole bunch of Ender 3s and 5s 3D printing our massive cathedral, and they are absolute workhorses. You can dial them in for quality or for speed or for a really nice blend of both and this new latest addition to the Ender series has a whole bunch of amazing features that will enable you to get your prints to the table faster than ever before. The new highly stable cube frame gives you the ultimate base and packs a whopping build volume of over 13 and a half thousand cubic centimeters for those spicy big scenery pieces. With a 16 point CR touch auto leveling system and the capacity to print from USB-C SD card, or even via Wi-Fi with an optional Wi-Fi box, you'll be 3D printing faster than you can even choose what you want to print. Now, printer nozzles clogging are the bane of FDM printers around the world, but the Ender 5 S1 has a new Sprite Direct Extruder, a brass bimetal heat break for super efficient heat dissipation for over 1,000 hours of clog-free extrusion. It seriously blows my mind just how far 3D printing tech has come. I cannot wait to get to New Zealand and set up our new studio and absolutely deck it out with new Ender 5 S1 machines and get printing some serious goodies. It's going to be awesome. If you guys want to get one of these hot off the press, check out the link down in my description or in the pinned comment and get yourself 3D printing today. So, I mean, this is just a sh load of 3D prints behind me. The boys have done amazing. Adam, James, Felix, you guys absolutely rule. Look at this stuff. I got these guys to print kind of like to a big list. We made a big list based off that original design I mocked up. But now that it's here, I'm going to roughly keep that in mind and just start diving in and experimenting. You always find more kind of uh, sort of structures and shapes uh, when, when you've got the stuff in hand. It's, it's sort of there and physical and, and more kind of tangible to play with. So I've got these MDF or Masonite sheets. Uh, they're going to be the baseboard foundation. Now we're going to start slapping down some pieces. I'm going to work off the roads, which I know are key to integrating it within the bigger board. And then we have to kind of have a play and work out how much I can afford to make modular and removable because I've basically only got two days to build this entire six by eight board. It's time to get cracking. So first up is the foundation, and we need to make sure we integrate this massive cathedral into the city in a way that's very playable. So I decided to have a road passing through the southern end, and I had a couple of Imperial Sector battle tiles left over, so it was time to hack them up with a whole lot of cutting, snipping, and sawing. Then I threw down my masonite sheets and grabbed a bunch of the 3D prints and started mocking up the footprint on this first half of the board to find my position for the roads. With the position marked out, I grabbed a bunch of extruded polystyrene and started trimming down those sheets to the right thickness with my hot wire cutter to match the height of the road tiles and then glued down the roadway with liquid nails and the foam sheeting with foam safe construction adhesive. Make sure you weight down all of those pieces so that nothing slides around as the adhesive expands. Now our prints were optimized for speed because we needed so many prints so quickly so on a few of the parts there was a little cleanup required, mostly just easy trims around the base where the STLs had mounted to the build plate and then a little bit of stringing which I easily melted back with my blowtorch. I then started to play with the building layer on these first two tiles. These pieces were two by two foot squares with the road running roughly down the center, which would have a huge walkway across the road to continue the cathedral structure across the whole footprint while allowing easy movement for troops and vehicles through the huge building. I wanted our first cathedral entrance points here as well, so I found some awesome archway openings which needed to be cut down slightly, which I did with my razor saw. I started making the upper 
upper walkway first, which may seem odd, but this way I can make sure that the two portions of the lower level on either side of the road will be spaced apart by the correct distance. This was done using a bunch of floor tiles that I joined together to make a long stretch of walkway. I glued those up with five minute epoxy, which I absolutely fell in love with over the course of this project. I then attached the first side of the ground floor to the board with liquid nails, beginning with the southern end of the interior cathedral, which will then continue from these two boards across onto the two larger boards to come, and then wrapping that room around into some exterior tiles, which will become the start of a wraparound promenade. I then started preparing our first tower pieces which would form the structure on the other side of the road, clipping out some doorways as this area was going to feature our first stairwell system. It's hugely important to me that this massive structure is playable and that means upper levels must have access. And over here in the tower complex, it's the perfect place to do it. With the southern side of the road ground floor finished, I put together the other half of the opposite side, again using some standard wall and floor pieces, as well as some of the exterior buttresses to to begin the other side of that wraparound promenade. Then it was time to start building up and continue work on the walkways. These will be one large piece that is removable, so I attached the flooring plate to an open-sided octagonal tower piece and then glued on another tower section with a roof join to become the first piece of our third level. I then used a series of tower supports glued in series to create some lovely archways along the floor of the walkway, which gave me a great surface to mount our roofing options. There are a variety of roof prints available from wall layer to complete with big holes and then some half ruined ones. I used a mix of these while combining a bunch of misprints from various printing tests to make a really interesting damaged roof line jutting out from the southern towers over our walkways. Before mounting the walkways, I built up the foundation on the remaining two baseboards, getting the foam layer to the same height. And you'll notice that these two boards are three by two feet, giving us a total building footprint so far of five by four or 20. 20 square feet. I grabbed a whole bunch of our most basic building modules, the plain 3x3 floor and the 3x3 floor and wall pieces, as well as a few exterior buttress walls and archways, and began extending our outer wall out from our original two boards onto the new 2x3 boards to try and get an outline of what this full cathedral is going to look like. For the two towers on the northern end of the board, I decided one of them would be fully ruined, which allowed me to save a bunch of pieces and make the other three towers even higher. So I used an open face octagon tower misprint and glued on a bunch of ruined wall pieces to sell that ruined effect and then laid down the first level of the final northern tower. This level of the tower would be open to the main structure and continue up in the same way as our first two southern towers and sit on that same axis. So the long roof line would have eventually joined before a massive shell blasted the top of the cathedral. To pan out the floor tiles in the center, I once again decided to combine some of the plastic zone Mortalis floor tiles from Games Workshop, which were kindly sent over to us by Brett from Gap Games once he heard about the epic build. Cheers for that, Bretty. So I cut down those to size and glued them down in the center of the building outline we had created to effectively give us our first floor fully complete. I then slapped our walkways from the southern towers in place and loosely stacked a bunch of modules onto the lower floor to give us an idea of how the general building shape might look. Just a reminder, if you're picking up any heresy goodies or any Warhammer and hobby supplies at all, remember to use my affiliate links, including the wonderful Gap Games here in Australia, as well as stockists in the US, EU, UK, and New Zealand. And we recently added a wonderful stockist in Canada, the fantastic Torchlight Games and Hobbies, who are just some great folks. All of those links send some dollar redos back to the channel to support Zorpa Zorp and get you guys the greatest prices for your hobby needs. So as you can see, the structure behind me is starting to take shape and we're getting a bit of a vibe on how this is going to be kind of blending playability, destructibility, and also looking amazing as well. So my kind of vibe now is that this huge shell has dropped on the middle. We'll still do more here, lots of ruins, but we're gonna have our taller elements around the sides to make up for the fact that we don't have enough kind of roofing structures. Uh, and now it's all about coming over to these little elements. And we wanna start bringing in our destructible components. So I wanna be able to have Titans blowing up chunks of the building and then ripping this off, ripping that out, putting the ruin bit back down. And so the building He's sort of going to get smaller and smaller as the game goes on with the kind of top elements being blown off and those bits that were at the top rubbleized then just get moved down as like a middle story gets taken out. So we should be able to have basically a building that's only one or two levels high uh, after the first round of combat. Should be pretty sweet.
Time to continue building upwards, so I dived into the second level of the intact northern tower, adding another open face octagon and extending the passageway to then mount an intact roof with a massive hole and then a roof joining octagon piece. Next was the second level of the cathedral on the southern end where the walkways joined the main structure. These pieces were made from some modified wall and floor pieces to create a unique footprint. Essentially, the upper floor of the first level would have not been a fully intact floor across the whole cathedral, but instead a large wraparound internal balcony to give the main chamber on the ground floor some grandeur with a little bit of cathedral ceilings. I slapped down a couple of other upper story modules that sat on our ground floor walls and then threw in some stairs in the main chamber for another upper level access point and then joined our northern tower to the other upper levels extending from the southern structures with a little three by one gangway that jutted out over the archway. This will allow all our upper stories to now be connected. Some interior Interior walls on these upper levels created some further interest and also allowed for further modules to be placed on top with greater structural support. I then added stairwells to the ruined foundation of the northwestern tower, giving us a nice access to the upper level in three parts of the board. Following on from the stairs, I needed an upper story section for the western side of the cathedral and created a really cool little balcony piece, which creates a nice reduction in cross-sectional area as the building gets taller, which makes for some nice spots for troops to deploy in defensive positions on the western side and it hints at the style of the once intact building. As this piece was right in line with our primary roof access from the southwestern to northwestern tower, I used some more roof misprints to create the blasted foundation of the roof line. Returning to the pieces opposite the two southern towers, I decided these would have no removable third level so simply finished off that upper story with some ruined walls and once again I want to stress here just just how key using 5 minute epoxy was for this build. These are simple face to face contact only joins with no orthogonal bonding bracing and the epoxy holds it together beautifully and more importantly it gets the job done fast. I continued some of the ruined roofing line onto the westernmost of these pieces to line up with that other balcony roofing we just did and then decided to slap down a whole bunch more of these simple ruined walls while I had them out and created the blasted remains of the interior rooms and walls inside the primary cathedral chamber. Then to finish off, my elevator from the ruined city build was placed inside to be the central elevator down to the data engine in the basement, which is a key detail from the Mark of Kelf campaign. Some extra platform details to the exterior ground floor balcony created some nice gameplay and aesthetic gains and in the future I'm going to get some massive statues of Primarchs or generic Emperor loving statues to deck out all these little plinths when this piece becomes part of the Petitioner City. With the upper structures really coming together it was time to polish off the ground floor and blend the printed structures into the board itself and you might have noticed that when I was mocking up the foam layer for this board all of the foundation that was hidden by the buildings was just garbage white and green poly, but the exposed foam elements were the lovely orange expanded polystyrene which is perfect for carving. So we're going to be using the classic stone carving techniques to smash down some floor tiles. Using a ruler I marked up and cut in a nice pattern of large flat flagstones, then widened the grout lines with my pencil, depressed the edges and the depths of various bricks to create a nice relief, and then heavily textured the whole surface by imprinting a rocky texture with some scrub crunched up aluminium foil. Once this was all covered with rubble, it's going to join absolutely seamlessly. So I started this build on Monday morning. It's now midday on Wednesday, just over two days, and I've put about 40 hours work in with very little sleep, and she is ready to be painted. This is a huge building. I'm so happy with how it's come together. A lot of work, but man, you can do stuff fast with 3D prints. So I'm gonna grab some rattle cans now and we're gonna start smashing the prime down and then we can get into rubble and get this guy ready for the tabletop. I laid out all their pieces in their full modular state so I could easily access them and I started priming and boy was this a big job. First I smashed them all with Rust-Oleum flat gray primer, getting a nice even coat over everything and then used age gray to create a nice zenithal from above and to give that neutral gray tone some definition. Then along all of the damage edges I came back with a black rattle can and blasted the edges to create some really quick and easy scorch marks which helped break up the clean grey uniformity and 
I was just so surprised by how easy and effective this was. Then all the flooring got absolutely slathered in an acrylic black wash, which is perfect for the foundation of our grime and our ruined floor. And that was a really simple and easy paint job, but now it's time to absolutely bring the piece to life with a whole load of base ready rubble mixes. I needed to get the perfect gray to match the color of the gray paint job, so I blended together some grimdark city rubble and standard city rubble, and then slapped down a whole heap of fast drying basing glue into all of the crevices and joins and the places that rubble and debris would collect. Let that start drying for about 15 minutes till the edges of the glue start to go glossy and tacky, and then I just started throwing base ready all around the place. A good practice is to throw down some larger stuff first into the glue and then sprinkle over a finer mix on the top to make sure all of your large and small aggregate sizes get a good grab from the glue underneath. Get this in there and just sprinkle it all around, really building up the rubble profile, and then to set it all in place and lock it down hard for the rigors of intense campaign gaming, I threw down some isopropyl alcohol and then an absolute soaking in Geek Gaming matte scenic sealant. The alcohol here creates a capillary action that allows the scenic to penetrate the layers of rubble and create a long lasting bond. I then whacked this down on all the remaining three pieces on the board. Now I was really happy with that first piece. And then once it was all dry, I tipped off any loose rubble and saved that for next time. And then repeated the process with the sealant three or four times to really lock it down. All of those products I just mentioned are available from my own shop, zorbazorb.com, which is linked down in the description. And there you can grab all of your scenery and Warhammer terrain needs. And it's a great way to support the channel. Then I did a quick test fit of the board and my goodness, what a journey this has been. Look at this absolute beast. Well, that is three episodes so far on this Imperial Palace journey, and a fourth one is coming in a few weeks, and that promises to be an absolute banger, as we bring all of these elements together into an absolutely mega board spanning over 72 square feet for the grand finale of the Mark of Kelth campaign. This build journey has been so crazy for me because everything you've seen so far was created in a week. A single week. A week, mind you, in which I barely slept and definitely traded in some of my life expectancy to make sure the boards were ready for the massive 10 day shoot for the campaign. But still, I got that done so fast. I think I'm most proud though of the destructibility I've achieved with this board. We'll see this in greater detail in the next episode, but my goodness, I'm really starting to create some dynamic and interactive scenery. This is the stuff I've been dreaming of since I was a teenager playing Cities of Death. If you wanna see this board in action, please go and check out the campaign campaign, link down in the description and the top comment. I know I banged on and on about it, but if you haven't seen it, please go and give them a watch. There's a bunch of episodes now. We've spent a lot of time and money trying to create something really special that's never been done before here on YouTube. And I genuinely think all the love and passion that we have for the heresy and the hobby in general really shines through and you'll just love it. A huge shout out to my amazing Patreons. These folks are incredible people and having your support is so humbling. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can check out Patreon link down in the description or simply click join here on YouTube to become a channel member and you'll both get some epic perks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm so excited for the next episode. I will see you very soon.